Okay, here we go. When you begin to study the films of certain directors, you begin to identify similar and recurring themes that appear throughout the respective films. Akira Kurosawa, one of the most influential and most celebrated Japanese directors of the 1950s to early 1990s, was no exception to this rule. One theme that Kurosawa loved to subtly convey in plenty of his films is the way he makes his male characters of his action-oriented samurai dramas more empathetic and emotional. In this AV essay, we will examine this theme in two of his most well-known samurai films and look at... Kurosawa's filmography throughout the years has spanned a wide range of genres. However, his most successful films that have resonated with both his native Japanese and Western audiences are his Jidai Geki films. Films based on the Edo period of Japan which spanned from 1603 to 1867. The Era of the Samurai The audiences of Japan from the 1950s to early 1960s reveled and enjoyed these films of men with swords clashing with their enemies to fight for mainly things like honor and tests of skill. Quote, Japanese audiences flocked to these pictures to watch men with swords take on their enemies and sometimes each other in dazzling displays of courage and skill from a bygone era. Despite Kurosawa's films usually focusing on dedicated individuals to certain paths filled with many obstacles to overcome with only glimpses of their goals, his characters were never just painted as one-note action heroes who were immune to softness. A lot of the samurai characters that are shown throughout his films, despite the air of origin, convey in passionate moments of dialogue and well-shot sequences their feelings in both bombastic and quiet moments. Rashomon 1950 in Kurosawa's 1950 film Rashomon, we are introduced to three men retelling a trial involving a widow to a murdered samurai and a bandit who took a man's life. In this non-linear film of unreliable narrators, three different perspectives of how the murder of the samurai are told. Here, we're going to mainly focus on the bandit and the real story. When the bandit conveys his story of events, he says that the wife begged him to kill her husband and take her away. What followed was a stereotypical, well-choreographed fight scene that was commonplace in samurai films, with the story ending with the bandit slaying the samurai with honor. However, this story was far from what had truly transpired. When we are told the real events that had transpired, we see a totally different view on all the characters involved. What had actually transpired was that the wife egged the two of them to fight, saying they weren't manly enough to settle their matters with a sword. Not wanting their manliness to be put into doubt, the two clashed. However, we see something plastered in both their faces that hadn't been seen before. The real fight was sloppy and hesitant. Both parties were afraid to strike first, fearing that the next attack would cost them their lives. Here, the facade of an honorable fight between two warriors is shattered, and what had truly happened was two men fighting to protect their egos. Judging on the story that the bandit had told, he didn't want himself and the samurai's death to seem pathetic in front of authority, so he created this false narrative of events that best benefited himself and somewhat the samurai. As Nick Red Firm states, The distortion in the different narratives is attributed to the egotism that drives the participants to present the version of events that portray themselves in the best possible light, and though none can be said to be lying, each shapes the fact to fit their character and situation. Kurosawa shows that these two men were willing to reluctantly fight each other to prove the charade of manliness. Seven Samurai, 1954 In Seven Samurai, another of Kurosawa's most well-known samurai action films, we follow seven samurai coming together to protect the town from bandits. Unlike Rashomon, we see the breaking down of manliness in a more empathetic light. Each of the seven throughout the film show a moment of weakness. However, the character that really stands out is Kikuchiyo, the reckless and loud samurai of the bunch. In the beginning, Kikuchiyo is played as the comedic relief, bumbling around and causing trouble wherever he goes. However, in one emotional scene, Kikuchiyo confronts the group on whether they want to continue helping the village after discovering that a few of the farmers have been looting and killing injured samurai. Kikuchiyo, enraged by their faltering trust, goes on an emotional tear-filled speech about the cruel realities of both samurais and farmers. The speech humbles the remaining six, but in return reveals to them that Kikuchiyo was once too a farmer, and he proceeds to run away from the group in shame. Here, Kikuchiyo is given acceptance. Having been a farmer himself, Kikuchiyo loudly conveys his emotions and opinions to the rest of the group, acting as a sort of mediator between the farmers and the samurai. However, despite being the most boisterous member of the Seven, he is accepted for his unmanly actions. His attitude, paired with the rest, helps soften relations and allows the others to calm during the tough times ahead. Even though he is found out not to be a samurai, he is accepted as one of their own. In both Rashomon and Seven Samurai, Kurosawa conveys both the pros and cons of the fragile manliness in two separate ways. In Rashomon, he conveys the fears of men not upholding a manly exterior and being afraid to be seen as pathetic and weak. 
In Seven Samurai, he shows the benefits of conveying what lies behind the hardened exterior and how acceptance can help bring unlikely people together. Akira Kurosawa shows in his manly samurai films of action and drama how fragile the concept of manliness truly is.